goes to RNAs, the messenger. That's the one that takes the message from the nucleus all the way to the ribosome. And they transfer RNA. Now, I always think of transfer RNA as a builder. Basically, it carries around what we call amino acids. So there's an amino acid always attached to the uh the transfer RNA, I should say. And it basically does what? It basically starts to build the uh, protein or the polypeptide chain. In real time, transfer RNA looks something like this. As you can see, it's not like really single-stranded. It's made of one strand of RNA, I should say, but this strand of RNA is looped on itself, right? So you can't really say that transfer RNA is double-stranded, but you can always say that it is single-stranded with some folding. So it folds on itself and it has this, we call it clover-shaped structure. Now, as you can see, the looping and the folding of that transfer RNA occurs because of some pairing. So you see here, I have some bases, RNA bases that are paired up with each other, like you have an A and U, C with G, they're paired up and they turn this RNA into that specific shape. And always, always in biology, the structure or the shape has to do with the function. So here on the transfer RNA, I have two parts. One part here on top, that's where the amino acids are attached. So the always, always the amino acids, like you have an amino acid here, they'll be attached at this top part of the transfer RNA. And there at the bottom, you have three bases. Those three bases are very important. We call them the anticodons. So what's an anticodon? An anticodon is simply three bases. It could be like A, U, G, or A, C, G. Three RNA bases. And this anticodon is simply to pair up with some three bases on the uh, messenger RNA. So like every three bases on messenger RNA, they'll pair up with three bases on the tRNA. So those, we call them the anticodon, if they're in the, on the tRNA, anticodon. And those three bases here on the messenger, they are called the codons, right? It's easy to remember if you, the T here corresponds to the tRNA, right? Now, What's the point of this codon anticodon pairing up that we have between those two types of RNA? Now, think about it this way. Remember, we have some amino acid that is always attached here on the top end of the tRNA, right? So this amino acid, so let's say this is amino acid, in my case, that's amino acid number three. This will correspond to some triplet that is found here on the tRNA itself. And it would have to follow or has to correspond to the triplet you have on the messenger. So basically, the codon on messenger RNA determines what's the anticodon on tRNA. And it determines what the identity of the amino acid you have there on the other end of the tRNA, right? So let's try another one. If I take another triplet here, if I take like another triplet here on the messenger, all right? And let's say I'm taking the second triplet here, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three. So that triplet would be different from the first one, probably is different. And it would call for a different tRNA. So another tRNA will come along and this other tRNA will carry some different amino acids. So as you can see here, whatever the triplet, whatever the codon you have on the messenger, it would basically attract a different tRNA and each tRNA comes with different amino acid on one end and a different anticodon. At that time to make a comparison between messenger RNA and tRNA. So here I have like an extensive list of differences and similarities between uh, messenger RNA and tRNA. So let's start with the part where it says folded. Now remember, only tRNA is folded because of those loops where we have hydrogen bonds. As you can see here, hydrogen bonds are exclusive for the tRNA. Both tRNA and messenger RNA are made up of the same mononucleotides, right? A, U, C, and G. So I'm going to leave this in the middle because it's common. Codons, the triplets, these are the triplets found on the messenger. So that's exclusive for messenger, while the anticodons are on tRNA. Notice that the tRNA is only found in the cytoplasm, while messenger could be found both in cytoplasm or the nucleus, right? So here it says in the nucleus, messenger RNA is the only one that could be found inside the nucleus. Here it says variable length. So this is like a marking point in the exam paper. 
What does it mean when I say variable length? Now notice, tRNA has a specific size and length and number of bases, while messenger could be shorter or longer depending on how long the gene is on the DNA or how long the polypeptide chain is. Now here it says translational only or only applies for translation, that would be tRNA. But here it says transcription and translation. Here we're talking about the function. So that would be messenger RNA. Amino acid attached, only tRNA comes with a part here on the top where the amino acids are attached. Now let's make a 